What's poppin' homies? It's your favorite homegirl, Gossip Girl here. And today I want to come in and talk to you about a story that happened um, 46 years ago on Easter Sunday. All right. So this is called a dinner, dinner at grandma's house on Easter Sunday. On Sunday morning, 46 years ago, an eight-year-old girl delivered an Easter basket to her neighbor's house. When she returned home, she told her dad that Charity Rupert was excited that her whole family was coming for Easter dinner. Okay. Leonard Rupert piled his eight children into his black van and drove his mother, drove to his mother's house in Hamilton, Ohio. Okay. Now, it, um, it was March 30th, 1975. They all drove up in this big black van and piled out of the car and staged an Easter egg hunt on the lawn. Neighbor George Root told the Cincinnati Post, 12 hours later, cops were removing bodies from the home. And 11 people were dead. The victims of the massacre, all eight of Leonard Rupert's children were dead. And so were he and his wife, Alma. Also dead was Charlie Rupert, 61 years old. The grandma delighted to have her brood over for Easter dinner. So, Leonard Rupert packed his children up. He lived in Hamilton, Ohio. He drove to Cincinnati, Ohio. And um, he packed all his kids, all of his eight, cho eight children in a black van. Went to his mother's house, right? They got out. They did the Easter egg hunt. And before you know it, 12 hours later, the cops were removing bodies from the house. 11 people were dead, okay? The victims of a massacre were all eight of Leonard Rupert's children. He was dead and his wife was dead, okay? Also that was dead was Charity Rupert, 61, the grandma that was delighted to have her brood over for Sunday dinner or Easter Sunday dinner. Cops said the killer was James Rupert, 40 years old. The bachelor brother who lived with his mom, although neighbors said he traveled, he was charged with 11 counts of murder. We can't seem to find a motive for this, the Hamilton police chief George McNally said at the time. This kind of murder usually has a motive like sex, greed, or jealousy. We can't find any of those things here. Some aspects of the case were just as would just leave them puzzled. The key to unraveling the horrendous slaughter was James Rupert, described as a loner, intelligent, and an avid reader. He was a talented but currently unemployed draftsman who, along with his brother Leonard, became the men of the house when their dad died very young. Charity said her kids were never allowed to be children. One neighbor told reporters they were always men of the house because their father died at an early age. They were very responsible. And now, 11 people were dead. The youngest, just four years old. Cops said each of the victims was shot in the head except for Charity. She was shot in the chest. The crime scene showed no signs of a struggle, everything was neat as a pen. Six other victims were found in the kitchen while the other five were in the living room. My goodness. Whew. It's possible that some of them were shot once and then finally given the shot that killed them, the, the coroner, Dr. Garrett Boone, said at the time. It's unlikely that 11 people would have been shot and killed unless they were in unless they were held in some way or were in position where none of them could escape. Detectives found 31 cart excuse me, detectives found 31 spent cartridges inside the death house, but neighbors said they didn't hear a peep from the two-story home on Minor Avenue, a quiet residential streets 
Hmm. But slowly, details emerge, adding weight to the old maximum maxim that still waters run deep. James Rupert was a man on the edge of financial, okay, hardship. He was about to lose his home, and Charity was demanding the substantial amount of money he owed her. An FBI expert testified at his murder trial. Rupert was clearly a person who suffered from um, severe paranoia and operated under a well-developed delusional system. Agent Ted Grinspoon said he believed that the FBI was in cons was in concert with his mother and his brother to demonstrate that he was a homosexual. Now, if this not crazy thinking, I don't know what is. Let me read that back for you one more time. Okay, James Rupert was clearly a person who suffered from severe paranoia and operated under a well-developed delusional system. Agent Ted Grinspoon said he believed that when we say he believed, he's talking about James. James believed that the FBI was in concert with his mother and his brother to demonstrate that he was a homosexual. If that's not crazy thinking, I don't know what is. It was a minor slight by his brother that James Rupert believed was tainting him. That triggered the explosion of violence. Huh. While his mother prepared lunch, the owlish looking five foot <laughs> six. Hold on. I know they did not describe James as the uh, owlish looking owl O W L I S H looking five six 135 pound Rupert was preparing murder. So while his mother was preparing lunch, he was preparing the murder. And they described him as a owlish looking five six 135 pound male. Owlish, okay. An owl will come to mind when you say owlish, right? He calmly walked down the stairs carrying an arsenal, a um a 357 Magnum, a pair of 22 caliber Saturday night specials, and an 18 shot rifle. I think he had this play on the lawn. Rupert killed his brother first, then his sister in law, then his mom, who made a valiant effort to save her family. And no one ran, no one screamed. He told cops when they arrived, my mother drove me crazy by always combing my hair, talked to me like I was a baby, and tried to make me into a homosexual. She, why is she combing his hair? And he's, what, 30-something years old? No, he's 40 years old. Why is she even still combing his hair? Like, I don't understand that. And she talked to him like he was a baby. That's what he said. And he also felt like she was trying to make him into a homosexual. And he wanted the family's $300,000 net worth for himself. Rupert figured if he played crazy, he would be declared not guilty by reasonable by reason of insanity, but declared cured in a few years, then walk out the asylum a free and wealthy man. Oh my God, he had it down. He he thought he was going to play crazy, okay? So that they would say, "Oh no, he's not guilty." They would since they would put him in a like a you know crazy house, okay? And in a few years, he'll act like he's normal, he's cured, and he'll walk out of there free, but with bad money, okay? But it didn't work out that for, like that for him. He got it partly right though. Rupert was convicted of two of the murders and found not guilty by reason of insanity in the other nine. Now, 86 years old, he remains in an Ohio prison. The mild-mannered killer is up for parole again in four years when 
he would be 90. Now, you got to take this in consideration that this is 1975. So, in 1975, um, let me see. This all happened in 1975, okay? And um, he was 40 years old. So, let's see here. He was 40 years old. But now that we um, got this story, he's 86 years old. And then in another four years, when he turned 90, he'll be up for parole again. But I don't think that he's going to get um, parole. I don't think he's going to get paroled. Um, I can't say he going to live to 90 because you never know. People out here living to 100 these days. But he is. he thought he was going to really like get not guilty he was gonna just be in a you know crazy house for a minute you know in a few years he's gonna act like okay i'm cured i'm good and he's gonna walk up out of there with mad money in his pocket and it did not it didn't happen like that for him i mean he did you know he didn't get charged for the other nine murders i don't even know why because he killed everyone in that house so why didn't he get charged for the nine murders hmm but he got charged for two. But they're not letting him out no time soon. So he could forget that. Yeah, so when he killed his family, it was in 1975 when he killed his family. That is crazy. That is crazy. That is absolutely crazy. Well, mm -mm -mm. so guys, let me know what you think about this article uh i just find it i found it really interesting to talk about because i haven't heard about this story i did not hear about this story and i was just looking online and it popped up and i was like okay i can talk about this today you know it was easter sunday i'm pretty sure some of you guys are you know getting your grub on and, and all that kind of stuff and i want you to enjoy the rest of your sunday so i'm out and i will talk to you again on monday now, if I got something interesting coming back, I'll, I might come back and tell you guys. But until then, I'll talk to y'all Monday. All right? Be easy.